Oh, hey, I'm back. And if you don't know who I am, then that doesn't really mean anything to you. But I think for my like 49 subscribers, this might be life changing. He's back to talk NBA action. Um, and I'm standing in front of a curtain with a buck jersey on. A lot of questions, a lot of questions to be put forth out there. A lot of questions to haphazardly answer. Now that we are in the NBA offseason, of course, now we're through the draft, through the bulk of NBA free agency. Uh, of course, a few impact players still available, we'll say that. But of course, you know, in most situations, the dust has settled. Um, of course, the Damian Lillard, James Harden situations loom large. But overall, I think most teams are staring at the roster and, you know, Maybe some things here and there on the fringes, but I think we have a good idea of what we're looking at going into the 2023-2024 season. We have a new CBA, which has huge ramifications for the way teams are going to be operating, of course. And we're doing season outlooks, of course, team by team, like we did last year that met rave reviews, of course, except certain cities looking at you, Toronto. Um, but we're going to start... As our American colonists did, of course, in the east. And then we're going to head west. But unlike the colonists, we're going to start in Milwaukee. Because they were the number one seed in the east, of course, losing to the Miami Heat in the first round. And this was a crucial offseason for the Bucks. Um, you know, probably, maybe underratedly so, the most kind of disappointing result in this year's playoffs. Um... You had this Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez thing. You know, would Chris Middleton opt into a 40 million player option or opt out and then, you know, extend more years for less annually? What would Brooke Lopez be worth on the market? Could the Bucks match what, you know, other teams with cap space could potentially offer him? Turns out Milwaukee collectively released a sigh of relief because they're bringing both guys back. You know, Middleton, of course, opts out for more years, less annually. Brooke Lopez, two for 48. Um, you know, given his age, the two year, it kind of now everything's set up for the next two years. We're going to run it back more or less. Um, of course, losing Joe Ingles to the Magic, and what I think is probably one of the weirdest free agent signings, and then Javon Carter to the Bulls. So those guys are out. But we're also going to bring in Malik Beasley. We're going to bring in. Robin Lopez, we're going to bring in Chris Livingston and Andre Jackson via the draft, of course. So, plus minus, you know, does it all relatively cancel out? Probably. I think that Malik Beasley signing is actually going to be critical and adding another shooter and a guy that can handle the ball, actually, you know, maybe he'll take some of those Javon Carter minutes. And Javon Carter probably underutilized um, until kind of, it was too late to really realize what they had. And so, you know, going into next season, you could argue the biggest change in Milwaukee, not on the court, but actually on the sidelines as they bring in Adrian Griffin uh, for Mike Boonholzer. Now, it, I've talked about this before, but it's really difficult to, to quantify what a coach contributes uh, to a franchise in the locker room, X's and O's, like, it, Without actually being there, you never really know kind of how like how much credit do we give coaches for playoff runs, um, unless it's someone that's super consistent, and like an Eric Spolstra who who kind of you know along with Jimmy Butler and company kind of dragged that squad to an NBA Finals. So that happened. Um, but you know, outside of the kind of extremes, it's really hard to really tell. Um, but, you know, from what we know about Mike Boonholzer, he was a guy very much like a stick to the plan, kind of inflexible in his X's and O's. And I think in the NBA playoffs in certain circumstances, especially when you're dealing with kind of a, a, a known strategist and tactician and Eric Spolstra, you know, that can be a crucial disadvantage in the playoffs when you're playing the same team, you know, four, five, six, seven times. And so it'll be interesting to see because we're basically bringing the same group back with a new coach. What can Adrian Griffin do that might be more flexible? You know, how can he use Giannis differently uh, than Mike Boonholzer traditionally did? And I think 
this is going to become specifically important on the offensive end because, you know, Milwaukee tends to get pretty stagnant. They can do a kind of like, you know, trading off possessions, you know, Middleton pick and roll, and then a Giannis post up and back someone down. Drew Holiday pick and roll gets can, can get kind of, you know, predictable. And that's one of the hardest things. Um, well, one of the easiest things to guard and one of the hardest things to continually be successful at during the playoffs. And so hopefully, you know, we'll look at maybe Giannis more in like a Sabonis, Jokic kind of, you know, dribble handoffs, um, more facilitating. Is that something Giannis is capable of? I think I think so. You know, he, he's not someone that's just kind of tunnel vision all the time. I think he can get like that in certain situations. But I think a little more off-ball movement could be really crucial to this team. Now, of course, Chris Middleton's health is going to be a big factor in whether this team is going to succeed or not, um, as well as Giannis's, who obviously got hurt in the Heat series. It's really just playoff health and regular season health to a certain degree we get healthy going into the playoffs. Um, but, you know, when you look at the Eastern kind of landscape here, it's Milwaukee, Boston. I think everyone can kind of agree. Obviously, this Harden piece is a little funky, but it's not going to vault the Sixers one way or another uh, to actually get into that contender conversation. So Milwaukee kind of has their work cut out for them. You know, you're bringing back a pretty solid supporting cast and Bobby Portis and Grayson Allen, Pat Connaughton. These are guys that have played in playoff games. You brought back Middleton, Lopez. I think whether Andre Jackson or Chris Livingston can really contribute early on, it's going to be tricky. I think Andre Jackson more likely than Chris Livingston. You know, Jackson, a little bit older prospect coming out of UConn, someone that can cut off ball, a lot of athleticism, um, can defend at a high level. So he might be someone you bring in um, as a high energy guy, maybe just another person you throw at uh, the opposing team's best player, give Drew Holiday a break on that end. Um, wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if Andre Jackson's actually playing some crucial minutes come playoff time. So keep an eye out for him. Um, but otherwise, you know, this Milwaukee team, let's bring it, let's, let's run it back, Milwaukee, you know? Um, buck up, I guess, fear the deer you know, phrases that Milwaukee fans say to each other when they pass each other on the street, of course. I've been to Milwaukee. I know what it's like. Um, the Milwaukeeans are very kind to me. Um, but with that said, excited to see what comes from this Milwaukee team uh, going forward, especially how Adrian Griffin kind of utilizes these pieces. And how about that? We stood the whole time. That's new. We're not behind the wheel. We're not sitting at a desk. We did it. So please let me know how you feel about Milwaukee's offseason. Where do you see them finishing in the East, of course? And um, as I used to say, uh, what did I used to say? You tell me. I said, take it easy, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.